So welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something I've been dreading for a long time. We're going to be working on this door pillar here. It is <laughs> it is a complete mess. So as you can see there, this door pillar is not in the best of shape. So one of the big problems is that this piece runs all the way up inside here and about halfway up this piece here. So all this steel is covering on top of it, as well as there's parts of the dash that are layered into this piece here. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of work to get this thing out. But the first thing I need to do is brace this piece. So we're gonna end up using some square tubing to kind of hold this thing in place to make sure it doesn't flex so much once we cut this thing away because otherwise it's just gonna be moving all over the place. And the last thing I want is a door sagging on me. So the other piece that's stuck underneath here is this kick panel. And uh, the kick panel is not in the best of shape. I really need to go ahead and clean that thing up because I also gotta finish installing the torque box. But anyway, that's enough talk. Let's get this thing moving. Okay, so for right here, I did between the frame rail and the base of this post right here, and I got 11 and a quarter, um, and then I did the front over here, basically did from this piece here over to the front of this piece here. I just marked it and wrote, I had seven and an eighth. Obviously, it's gonna be different if you're doing it because this isn't exact, but I just wanted to make sure I had movement from the front to the back, so that way when I go to line this thing up, I know it's gonna fit right, because realistically going this direction or this direction isn't much because it's gonna hit on the actual rocker panel so there's not really much change there but there is a little bit of change front to back so yeah it's just peace of mind really so now i just got to find an easy way to break up all these spot welds because uh this part kind of sucks so as i was attempting to drill out all these spot welds with an old dull drill bit which boy let me tell you that's a lot of fun uh, i discovered something kind of gross and that's that my drip rails are pretty bad there's a lot of rusty holes in here and i'm pretty sure there's going to be something really nasty underneath it so these drip rails have got to go which means that i also need to remove the actual bracing that i was using because i welded it to the drip rail i don't know why i did that but anyway i found that removing this thing was actually going to be more of a pain in the neck than i originally planned on because well it's in a really horrible spot to try to cut out and it turns out that there's a whole bunch of metal that's weaved in between all these pieces so it's going to be a lot harder to remove this stuff without damaging the roof you'll see why here in a second this is one of those moments where i think i got myself in a little bit over my head uh these rain gutters here i was trying to take out but this metal is weaved in between the roof and this side piece here and it goes all the way down and i discovered something really nasty I discovered all of this rot and just horrible, horrible rust. The problem is, is that it goes all the way up to here and it's pretty bad. The other issue is in here, there's this weird seam sealer and I think this is lead, which is kind of a problem because I've already kind of cut into it a little bit. Um, and you can see where these gaps are, which is just because of removing that drip rail. But yeah, it's not good. So my big worry is that it's gonna be the exact same thing on the other side, and uh, I really don't know how I'm gonna fix that. I really don't wanna to have to do all that. I, uh, I already feel like this thing is way bigger of a project than I ever intended. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just getting in a little bit too deep. And uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I got this book that's got basically all the welds on these cars, and I wanna show you exactly why this is such a pain in the butt. So this you can see is the drip rail and there's this hidden piece right here that's underneath the roof skin that makes it really hard to get to because not only do I gotta break all these welds but up here where the actual roof skin is, I can't get to that weld without removing the roof. On this piece here, there's all these welds that are on top and that actual weld is hidden underneath this along this frame that sits right underneath the roof right here. Basically, it's hidden on the other side of that frame rail right there. So I guess the thing that I'm really struggling with right now is how much money do I actually want to put into this thing to fix it? I know that all these repairs can be fixed, but it all costs money. And it's not cheap. Not to mention the fact that I still don't have an engine, transmission, rear end, suspension. Like, there's a lot of parts for this car that I don't have yet that is just going to get really, really expensive the further we go along in this build. And I'm sorry, but YouTube isn't paying me enough to build this thing. So, um... Yeah, I'm kind of at a crossroads here, and I don't know if I'm going to just continue digging myself into a financial hole, or at what point is it worth just cutting it loose. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to work on burning out these lead welds here, and just try to see if I can get this bare metal showing, so that way I can figure out how the hell I'm going to cut all this stuff out. 
So the plan that I came up with is I wanted to grind off as much of this rust as I could and figure out just where the rust stops and then make a cut there. It just so happened to be basically in the middle of that lead seam. And then I'm going to try to break off this entire portion of this A-pillar. At least I think that's what's called an A-pillar. Problem is that my drill bit was so dull, it was getting so annoying. So I ended up using my old messed up spot weld cutter. The spot weld cutter works really well. The problem is I'm missing the centerpiece that holds it in place. So it kind of moves a little bit, but once I got it in there, it worked really well because it just tears right through that metal. So it was really easy to separate these welds. I basically just hit every spot that I could find. There was a couple spots where I accidentally drilled through and a couple spots where there wasn't actually a weld there, but it was really hard to tell because some of these welds are really old and the metal's kind of messed up. But I was able to get them all drilled out so that way we could actually get in there with a hammer and a chisel and try to break these things apart. It was kind of a pain for some of these spots because I really don't want to mess up this piece that much. So I kind of had to be careful with how I was separating it. If it was something I didn't care about, I would just use an air hammer. But because I cared, I took my time and it came out a lot better. Man, I don't know how people do this without totally messing these things up, but for the most part, it's all intact. The real issue is under here, look at this, this rust was just hidden. So uh, yeah, good thing we're replacing this entire post because it goes all the way up to here. Now the inner side, I'm probably gonna just treat with some acid to try to get rid of all that rust and then hopefully get a base coat of paint in there. So the next thing is gonna be getting this thing out. So luckily when it came to the door pillar, it wasn't as bad as removing the windshield pillar because I literally don't care what happens to it after because it's just gonna end up in the scraps. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna use my drill to kind of start it and then use my broke spot weld cutter to kind of finish it off. And then anything else, I'm just gonna end up using an air hammer to rip it off because the air hammer just makes really short work of it. And I'm not too worried about it getting damaged at this point because I just want to get it off. Well, it ain't pretty, but we got it off. So now I think the next thing is going to be taking out this other panel. I think I'm going to have to find a way to brace this dash because I, I pretty much ruined it trying to get that piece off. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up welding this little support bracket here just to kind of hold this thing in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drill out the welds on this side of this piece. And then there's another one up underneath there that we're going to get just to make sure we get that thing out. It's like right there. So then we're going to cut this piece out here so that way it unhooks from the dash. Now the dash is technically supported by this piece here, so it should be okay. But I just want to add this little extra bit just to make sure that it doesn't shift at all. So now that we got this thing all nice and stabilized up there, we got it stabilized back here. It's time to go ahead and remove this whole piece here. So, uh, yeah, this should be fun. So luckily, when it comes to the kick panel, it's just like the door panel. I'm pretty much just ripping this thing off. I'm drilling it out. I'm going to use a combination of drill, spot weld cutter, and angle grinder just to get these things worn out enough to where I can just pry it off with an air hammer. And then I'm just going to try to clean up the welds as best I can. Pretty simple. So you ever start a project and wonder why you began in the first place? Well... This is uh, definitely one of those projects for me. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot. The next thing that I need to do is get this kick panel welded in here. But before I can do all that, I need to treat all of this rust. I got to get everything braced up and make sure everything's lined up. So uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me. All right, so there's definitely a lot of rust. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some acid to try to burn that stuff out. Pretty much we're going to try to see if this stuff actually neutralizes any of the rust that we have because there's definitely a lot of it in a lot of places, especially behind the dash. Um, but I want to make sure that any of the places that we're going to be welding to are completely rust free You know, I'm going to first do this try to neutralize as much of the rust and then hopefully get some paint on there Like some steel it just to create a good barrier and then we'll work on getting these other panels on So let's get to getting the acid on there So this was actually a really cool process because you can kind of see it slowly working on this time lapse and basically what it's doing is it's turning rust, iron oxide, into a chemical called iron phosphate. And it basically looks like this black substance, but it makes it to where it's inert. So essentially it's not going to rust anymore from that point. And once this stuff fully dries, I can just spray it with some paint and then it's like good to go. Uh, me personally, I hit it with a wire brush and stuff because I wanted to make sure that it was good, like really, really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, this stuff works really awesome and it's really cool to see how it just literally melts the rust away. I applied it to the inside of that windshield pillar. Um, I don't even know what to call that thing, the A pillar, whatever. Uh, and yeah, it's just melting that rust away. It looks great. And the best part is if you look at what it looked like before compared to now, I mean, it's like night and day and it worked really, really fast. Like there's still some spots here that are a little bit wet. It almost looks like this like really dark black stuff, but like that stuff will soon dry up and it'll be just good to go. 
it's kind of surprising how well this stuff works because I was thinking about having to sand all this stuff by hand or be going over everything with a wire brush and this stuff just made short work of it. So I'm really happy with the results and I'm looking forward to seeing what else we can use this on. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how that worked. It seemed to neutralize most of the rust. Uh, it's got a little bit of things that we got to work on here and there, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing we got to do is get these things cleaned up just a bit just to make sure it's a nice flat surface. We're going to get these things cleaned up just a little bit more and then shoot some paint on there so that way we can get the kick panel put on here and hopefully have something in here instead of just a void. So to get the kick panel lined up right, there's a couple of alignment marks. I pretty much lined it up as best I could, then marked a few things with the Sharpie just to make sure that we drill the holes in the correct spot because there's a lot of holes that need to be drilled and it all depends on how it sits on the body of the Mustang. So I pretty much just marked it out with a Sharpie that's like a straight line of where it is and I just drilled pretty much inside that line as best I could. I probably could have got a little bit closer to the edge on a few pieces, but for the most part, it looked pretty good. Once I got done drilling all the holes, I pretty much had to sand everything down, grind out all the little flares and things that would pop out from the holes because there was a couple spots where I just had to use a hand drill. Um, and I just wanted to clean it up so that way I could actually go ahead and spray it with some paint. Now spraying the paint, I just ended up using another coat of steel it. Pretty basic stuff here. I pretty much just lined the whole thing up just to make sure it was completely covered. This isn't completely necessary. I could have just sprayed where it was going to be welding to, but I figured why not? Let's just get it all painted up one color. But then after I painted the piece, I ended up spraying on along the body of the car and a couple of the spots that were going to be covered up just so that way we don't have to worry about it rusting in the future. Now when it came to welding this thing, there were a few tricky spots that I needed to get and it was up in the corner where the dash is because I couldn't get a clamp on that so I ended up just pinching it as best I could and using wedges and stuff to try to get it as close as possible so it's not perfectly ideal but you know what we just make it work like we do with everything else on this channel. So this part of the build has really been challenging me. This whole thing has been taking me way longer than I planned. It's been over a month already and it's been one hell of a month. I uh, just recently found out that my cat has bladder cancer, and I've had him since he was two. He's about 12 now, and uh, it really, really sucks. And for me, instead of trying to, like, sit and be sad and whatever, I find that, like, doing things to keep me busy seems to be the most helpful thing for me. Like, some people would say I'm avoiding my problems, but for me, it's one of the few things that actually helps me get through this kind of stuff, because, man, I... <sighs> It sucks losing something you really, really love, and uh, especially because it's going to be slow, and I'm going to have to watch it happen. Um, yeah, it, it just it sucks, but that's why I'm kind of trying to just keep my head down and work on this car and see what I can do. And uh, yeah, just know that like I know these things have been kind of sporadic, but it's like I got a lot going on outside of the car stuff, and I'm trying to push through it as much as I can. And I know that my uploads are very inconsistent, and that's because well. I'm kind of an inconsistent person, so I'm trying to work on that, and hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to get a little bit better about that, but for right now, just bear with me. I'm going to keep working on this thing, and hopefully we can finish this thing up pretty soon. So luckily, all my alignment marks look pretty good. We got everything feeling pretty good. Back here, I got this side lined up as good as I could. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a guessing game with this thing, but I've got it pretty dang close, I think. Now I may have went a little bit overboard with these drills because uh, I drilled a whole bunch of holes. I may not have needed so many welds, but I figure better safe than sorry. I want to make sure it's on there nice and strong. After we got done drilling it out, I just cleaned up all those little drill holes and then got everything painted up really nice with another coat of steel it. Yeah, I know it's expensive stuff, but hey, it looks good and I think it's going to last. So here's another useful part that this book comes in handy. Uh, it kind of talks about all the different places for all the welds, measurements for all these different things, where they're going to be, how far apart everything should be. So it really comes in handy when it comes to figuring out exactly how these things go, because it even has diagrams of like how each metal is supposed to be overlapped. I mean, this book is just awesome. Honestly, it's probably one of the best like 30 bucks I've ever spent, because it goes all throughout the car. So luckily I left those two little welds from the old one to kind of line this thing up. So my thought is I'm going to weld this piece on first and just kind of work it in. I'm going to also try to clamp this so this way it's nice and even with this piece here. Um, and then we're just going to kind of force this thing to fit. So far it's looking pretty decent. But uh, yeah, it's really important that we get this thing right. So I'm really hoping I can get this thing correct because I don't want to put this thing all together and then realize that the door doesn't fit. Um, it's going to be a while before I find that out. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to do this to the best of my ability and see what we end up with. So I'm pretty low on gas, but we're just going to try to do the best we can. 
So now when I came to getting this piece welded on, I was really struggling with getting the angle correct because there's a slight angle to this door pillar so it's not perfectly vertical and like trying to make sure that it's lined up as best as possible is super important. And what I found was I was following the curve of the door where the original door was and I kind of lined it up between that and the dash but even with that I was still getting some issues comparing it to the other side. So I basically got it as close as I could. I lined it up with the welds that were on the very bottom of the previous door panel and I think I've got something that's worth working with here. Now the only issue that I ran into that was kind of a pain was for some reason I kept getting porosity and I think it has something to deal with this steel it. There's a couple spots where it's kind of raised up and the welds look really shitty and I ended up having to re-grind them down and redo them multiple times. Alright, so now comes the fun part. I've already treated this thing with acid but there's still some spots that are kind of rusty that I'm going to have to go back over. I want to clean this thing up as best as I can and try to preserve as much of this metal as we can. Some of these pieces are a little bit rotten though so I may have to patch some spots. The other thing that's kind of annoying is when I was removing this thing, it got kind of bent out of shape. And I don't know if you can see just how messed up that is. But uh, yeah, we're going to try to fix a lot of that. There's also some lead still on here, so we're going to have to burn that off. Um, and yeah, so we're going to just try to make this thing fit as best as we can. And I'm going to try to use these holes that are on here to use them as like a guide for when we're putting it back on the car to make sure that it's going to fit in the right spot. And hopefully the piece that we put on there is in a good position. So... Yeah, let's get to it. So yesterday I almost managed to pull out all of my hair trying to figure this thing out because uh, absolutely nothing was lining up on this thing and I can't figure out why. I'm not sure exactly if it's something with the angle or what, but I've measured and remeasured just about everything I can with this post and it's still like just not quite right. So you can see there I've got the original holes where I drilled it out lined up. Obviously it's not perfect. Um, and I had to get this piece here to line up just the way that it's supposed to, but when it's there, this piece is slightly forward more so than what it should be. Um, and these holes are just not lining up properly because I can't get it to sit quite flush. And I've already bent this thing a bit to get it moved up out of the way. Because where this thing originally wanted to sit was moved out like out about here. And it was just too close because even when I measured this piece up against the pillar there and I measured the pillar over there to that piece there this was just not in the right position so wherever this was maybe when it got hit it might not have gotten pushed into the right position like maybe it got bent so I've been just struggling to try to get this piece to fit properly and it's just not quite there so what I'm gonna do to make sure that this thing's not messed up is I'm gonna actually go get one of the doors and mount it to this thing and see just how it's fitting because the last thing I want to do is weld this thing up and then have the door not fit right in the door alignment just be completely jacked up. So I'm going to go get that and see if we can get that thing popped on here. So first things first, I'm going to cut this piece out. We'll be able to do it with the latch on the back. Okay, watch your feet. You can try to latch it. I don't know if it will. It latch. It's on. Uh, I might have got one in. Okay, I think I got it started. So the question is, how is it sealing? Let's see mm -hmm. if it'll open. be able to see it from the inside maybe. I can tell you this much, I mean the door looks fairly lined up except at the bottom. I, I, I'm i impressed in the sense that this is relatively uniform and this is relatively straight. I mean it went on and off, out and in, pretty easy. See this is the only spot that has me worried, it's right up here. See this little gap there? Yeah. But I think that could just be the bad weather ceiling. Could be, but I mean you can always fill that in with something if you had Right. To. I think this will be fine. So are we taking the door off then? and? Yeah, what are you we'll, gonna do? I think we'll take it off. You're gonna mark whatever you gotta mark so that you can do what you gotta do? I think that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try to make this thing fit. So you can see how the door is sealing and it looks pretty decent. There's only one spot in here where there might be like a little bit of an air gap, but I think that the weather stripping is gonna cover most of that and it fits really tightly all the way up here. So this whole piece right here is gonna be able to slide forward just that little bit 
and move it just slightly out of the way and we should be fine because even right here it's like really really tight so yeah i think we're pretty good to move forward on this i'll take this side you want to unlatch it yep we're good okay here we go we're going to the back yeah all right not bad for a 50 year old door heavy as shit so I think we're good. So now the next step is I gotta prep this thing and make sure that it's gonna fit 100%. And that's gonna require a lot of modifications. So before I get to that, I figured I'd take a wire brush to it, try to clean up all the rust that's on there, as well as burn off some of that lead that's in that seam. That stuff's pretty toxic, so you gotta be really careful here because you don't wanna be breathing that stuff in. Okay, so I just got done burning all this lead off. You can see it down there. It's pretty nasty stuff. That's why I got a mask on. But uh, I found that there's actually a lot more rust inside here than what I originally thought. There's a lot of really deep pitting and a lot of things that are going to have to be addressed. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to end up cutting out this entire section here. And then just putting in a new plate of metal right there just to make sure that it's all good to go. Everything else is looking okay. I'm still having some trouble getting this to fit just right. But I'm getting it much, much closer. There's a few spots that I still need to address. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on addressing all this rust on this piece first. Um, make sure we still get it to fit on the car right. And then we'll go ahead and get it zipped on. So yeah, making progress. Now, I am no professional at doing patchwork, but all the patchwork that I've been doing on this car has taught me one thing, and that's that you always wanna cut the piece bigger than what you actually need and then grind it to fit from there. Because when it comes to cutting a straight line, it's very hard to do with a cutoff wheel, especially since it's such a complex shape. I mean, this thing's kinda got a slight curve to it, and I wanna make sure that it fits just right. So there's a whole bunch of back and forth between the vise and the car and making sure that it fits just right. But once I had it fitting just right, I ended up tacking it in place with a couple of tacks and then I made another piece to match the other end of it because I didn't have a piece of metal long enough to cover the entire thing. So once I had that piece, I kind of did the same thing where I cut it out, ground it down, made it fit. It's a lot of this back and forth stuff, but eventually we get it to fit just right because I wanted to make sure that this thing was going to be the perfect size. Now when it came to welding this thing in, I ended up just doing a bunch of tacks going all the way around because I wanted to control the heat as best I could because the last thing I want is for this thing to start warping on me and then I got a twisted up piece of metal. That's no good. Okay, so I got this thing mocked on here pretty well. It's fitting pretty good. I gotta clean up these welds a little bit more. But right now, the main issue that I'm running into is as I get this thing lined up on here, it's still not quite perfectly lined up here. So my thought is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut right here to be able to fold this up tight up against this piece here. And then we'll make sure that these are nice and straight bend it to shape, and then weld it all back together. So this is not the most ideal way to do this, but it's the way I'm gonna do it. So what I ended up doing was just cutting a small slit and it wasn't exactly perfectly straight, but that doesn't really matter because I'm gonna make it fit. But for the other part of it, I noticed that it was kind of warped a little bit. So I ended up having to bend it back into shape using a torch and a hammer. And I just kind of worked it until I got the shape that I needed. It's not pretty, but it does the job. Then I went ahead and started burning off the lead that was stuck on the seam. This stuff's really, really nasty. So like, again, I have to wear protection because I don't wanna be breathing in lead and giving myself neurological diseases. That would be very bad, okay? After I got all the lead burned off, I ended up putting another layer of acid underneath because I found a little bit more rust. And I just wanna make sure that we get it all taken care of. So that way we're not worried about future rust after we do these repairs. So funny story, I was actually getting my welding gas redone. I just got a whole new tank. Well, they refilled my old one, but anyway, I was asking them, I was like, hey, I gotta grind down these pieces and I can't get access to these welds because it's really, really tight and my angle grinder is just hitting every edge possible. And they were like, well, have you ever heard of a file sander? And I was like, uh, no, but uh, long story short, I ended up going to Home Depot and getting one. Uh, it turns out these things are only like 30 bucks. Well, it was like $35, but uh, it's really small. It can get in like really tight spaces, supposedly. So let's give it a shot and see if we can actually knock out the rest of this piece over here because there's some spots that I just couldn't get with my grinder. So I don't know what kind of belt they gave me with this thing, but there's no way it was like a 60 grit or anything like that because this was taking forever and it didn't last very long at all. Well, that kind of sucks. I didn't even get all the way through and I already ripped through one belt. Uh, I don't know if this belt's just kind of crappy quality or what, but... Uh... Yeah, I need to get a better belt. Um, but it did seem to do the trick. Got in there pretty well. Got a lot of this stuff cleaned up, so it's not exactly horrible. I could definitely see a use for this tool in the future, but I need to finish cleaning these up. So I ended up just using my die grinder to finish this thing off. Uh, it's kind of a pain because there wasn't really a lot of room to work with, but I managed to make it work as best I could. I got plenty of penetration on the inside of this thing, so I'm not too worried about it. 
I cleaned it up and got a fresh coat of steel it on the inside just to make sure we're nice and cleared up as well as on the back side of this frame so pretty much good to go okay so it's a quarter to one I have a flight to catch at four in the morning and I'm trying to get this done because otherwise I won't have a video for you guys so I'm really trying hard to get this done I normally would never do this when it's this late hopefully I can be as quiet as possible right now I got my garage down so hopefully that'll help a little bit um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to weld this thing up. There's a couple spots where it's fitment is kind of sketch, but we're gonna try to do as best we can. I'm gonna use a hammer to kind of make this thing work, and uh, hopefully my neighbors don't get upset with me. I'm sorry, guys. I really, I really do try to be nice and courteous, but this is just like one of those times where I just gotta send it. So wish me luck. I'll tell you, when it came to doing this piece, I was really nervous because I had so much trouble trying to get this thing to fit right. But luckily, as I was welding this thing together, the heat was really working in my favor because I was using a combination of hammers and clamps to kind of get this thing to fit just right. And it was just kind of falling into alignment. Thank God, because this thing was stressing me out for the longest time. Once I got all the pieces kind of lined up real good, I was able to weld them all in place. Now, some of these welds aren't the best, and I think part of it has to deal with this steel. It. I'm really not sure what's going on there. But eventually I got everything welded up and it was looking really good. I was especially proud of how well these things lined up. I mean, it looks just like it did before, if not a little bit better. Obviously these welds aren't the best, but once I grind them down and clean them up, it's gonna look really good. Problem is it's really late and I can't do that right now because I've already made enough noise just trying to put this piece on. Luckily, none of my neighbors called on me, so I think we're okay. And in the end, it's looking pretty good. Well, believe it or not, we got it done, and it's only about, oh, 2.30, so I have about an hour to get ready for this plane. But, uh, yeah, I'm super stoked I actually got it done, so I'm actually going to get this video off for y'all. Um, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. It looks really good. i got to clean up a bunch of these welds with just a grinder, but I'm not going to do that because it is way too late for that. Uh, but other than that, it looks great. All these pieces fit really well, and I couldn't be happier with how this thing turned out. It's funny to think that just a few weeks ago, I was sitting in this exact same position and debating whether or not I wanted to just junk this car. And yet here we are, still making progress. We actually got these things done. It looks fine. All the worries, all of the just nights staying up late trying to figure out how I was going to do this were finally paying off. So. I still have a ton of work to do on this car, like a ton of work, and I'm sure I'm going to have many more doubts, many more nights of just pure terror, but eventually we're going to get this thing done. Well, at least that's the plan. <laughs>